Ephesians tonight, chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6 tonight. I'm not sure where Matt got the statement. Uh, I thought about it many times, that one about there are 500 billion people that are, where, where did you come across that? Yeah, yeah. 500 billion. Never been prayed for. You think of all the people. All the people. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. One verse tonight, verse 18. I'm, I'm sorry, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful. Lord, how marvelous and how wonderful it is to be saved and to know we're saved. Lord, I thank you again tonight for all the folks who have come out on this in the middle of the week. Lord, we would pray that you would increase our number. Lord, to pray. Reminded when the church prayed without ceasing for Peter, he was delivered from Herod. What a miracle that was. Lord, we know that thou art still able to do those great miracles. And Lord, we would pray tonight. Lord, we pray for our Jerusalem right here, Judea, Samaria. Lord, that the darkness would be removed. Oh, how dark the night is. Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity. I pray you'll help us tonight, Lord, as we think on on some thoughts, Lord, for a few minutes. Lord, I always look forward to prayer meeting time. And so, Lord, I thank you again tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Dave, that, uh, Lord, for, for the lessons he's brought on Romans up till now. And, uh, Lord, uh, a lot of good thoughts. So, Lord, I pray now that you'll help me tonight and bless in the few minutes that we have. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, thinking about this. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And we're not going to talk so much about the shield of faith tonight. But let me just say this as we get started about faith. I'm sure all of us could come up with some idea or some definition of what we believe faith to be. We know that the Bible says, now we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What does that mean? Anybody? 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 What, what, what does that mean? We say, well, well, we know that verse in Hebrews. is in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, we know that faith is the uh, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. John. <coughs> John. <laughs> Taking God at his word. Taking God at his word. First John says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That's faith. Taking God at his word. Taking God at his word. I repeat, taking God at his word. Now that would entail a lot of things. Now, faith in Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that by faith, we believe that the worlds were framed. By faith, God said that. By faith, we believe that. That by faith, we believe. Now, I've said this many times. I do not have time to go around answering everybody's objection to why they do not believe the King James Bible is to be the Word of God. I don't have time to do that. And they can come up with every kind of reason or excuse about it, but I, by faith, believe that this is the Word of God. I mean, I just believe that it is. You say, well, prove it. I, I cannot prove it. I just, by faith, believe it. That's what it is, by faith. In Luke, Jesus asked the question, When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what? Faith. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith, or shall he find those who are faithful. Faith. Living by faith. Let's roll off favorite song. 
living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, abiding in his sweet love, free from all care, neither sheltering wings or arms, one of the two. But that was his, it wasn't my favorite song, it was his. But, uh, you know, it's like living by faith. That's how we live. If we're going to be successful against the devil, look back real quick at Ephesians chapter 3. If we're going to be, one, successful against the devil, then we need to have faith. The disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. We need to have more faith. They said, Lord, why could we not cast out this demon? He said, this kind cometh but by prayer and by fasting. Well, we sometimes have faith, but we, Lord, increase our faith. Ephesians chapter 3 tells us this in verse 17. Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, beginning in verse 13, but verse 16, I'm sorry, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. How are we saved? We're saved by faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. All right, Christ dwell in our hearts by faith, but then it says also in that verse, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, that as believers in Christ, as those who have trusted Christ, we need to be rooted and grounded. Because there's the reason why. Because Satan is all the time throwing darts at us. Now, the Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices. We are not ignorant of his devices. But how, truthfully, I mean, think about this. How many Christians are ignorant of Satan's devices? They're ignorant. They, they, they really, now, ignorant doesn't mean they're stupid. Ignorant, Paul says in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. And Paul uses that word ignorant several times. It does not mean that they're stupid. It just means that they're unlearned in a particular thing. And many Christians are unlearned in the devices of the devil. I ask you this question tonight. I'm going to ask you another question in a moment, but think about this for a minute. How does the devil attack you? Oh, he don't ever attack me. Yeah, right. You are absolutely wrong if you do not think, if you don't think the devil attacks you, he's already succeeded. I, the, he has succeeded in, in such a great way. You know, he's gone out to deceive the world that multitudes of people don't even believe in the devil. What a job he has done. How does the devil attack you? He does. Now, it says in Ephesians, Chapter 6, where we read, thereby taking the shield of faith, wherewith you should be able to, to quench the darts that the devil is throwing at you. The darts that he's throwing. Have you ever stopped to consider, what are the darts that he's throwing at me? What are the darts that Satan is throwing at us? So I ask you that question tonight. What are the darts? Name me a dart that that Satan throws, anybody. I know it's kind of, huh? Doubt, the, the, the dart of doubt. The dart of doubt. Now, thereby taking the shield of faith, wherewith, all right, he's throw, throwing that, that dart of doubt. That, and, and how many Christians? I know everybody doubts from time to time. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. But to live in constant doubt, the, the, Satan wants you to doubt. So if, if we're going to be successful in extinguishing the, the, the dart that Satan is throwing at us, we must have faith. Well, Satan, I know what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And may I just remind you, sir, Mr. Devil, and I remind you about this, and I'm very, very, I'm very, I'll be honest with you, I'm very leery of the devil. Uh, if Michael, the archangel, would not argue with him, I'm not about to argue with him, I'm just going to say this, the Lord rebuke thee, and this is what God said. God said this. Get behind me. All right, devil, I'm going to say this to you, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, it, it, this, is, this is my 
In that chapter 10, this is the part I like. Mr. Devil, for where the heart man believeth on the rights. I believed. You can't get me. I believed. Now listen. All right? The dart of doubt. What else does the devil shoot at us? What else does he shoot at us? John? Addiction? Addiction? Ten years after I quit, I still I have that desire. It's, it's a terrible addiction. An addiction, nicotine, and it could be anything. And, and you know how the, you know how subtle the devil is. You know this, this is what it does. Let me ask you this question. I'll ask you this. I don't know what the answer is. Did you ever see Christians who smoke? Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, well, preacher, I know so-and-so and they smoke. You know, what I, you know what I call that? And, and John's got a, a good one there. Here's what I call the dart of conforming to the world. I'm just saying to you, do you know how many Christians drink? Really? I know tons of them. And that, now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says this, that we are to abstain from the very appearance of evil. All right? So there's a principle to live by. Now, we can find verses, but I, I, I know this from being around my, my, my dear brothers. They can just, they'll justify drinking to you. They'll pull a verse out here. One of my brother's favorite verses in, is in Galatians. And it's a paraphrase of it in that it says, uh, uh, you are offending my conscience. Because I said something one time about it. He said, well, you're offending my conscience. You have one conscience. <laughs> uh, and people can justify it. And, and so we don't want to seem to be, to stick out. You say, well, well uh, other people are doing it and, and, you know, I, I don't want to seem to be a, uh, you know, an old stick in the mud. And, and, and they're doing it. And, and uh, uh, my, my brother tried to get my wife tanked up one night. And he said, well, Jim will never know. Or something like that. Didn't he say Jim will never know? Jim will never know? What did you tell him? Yes, he will, because I'll tell him or something like that. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just, and people say, well, and, and the devil throws that dart at us. He says, come on. Just, look, you don't have to be a drunk. You don't have to be a drunk. But just take a little drink. The, the dart of conformity, and when you have addictions, they always ask me at the doctor's office, have you ever smoked? And I always tell them, yeah, I smoked about 200,000 cigarettes in the back seat of my father's car. I said, I just, but ter terrible. You know, I, Carol can't stand cigarette smoke. It doesn't bother me. I can be around it. It, it doesn't bother me. I guess because I was around my father so much and I just, but people have addictions. And they, they, they do not want to see. Look, if we're going to, Put out those spears that the devil's throwing at us. We need to have faith. Just take God at his word, as John said. First John chapter 3, it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. We have confidence in God not to conform. Uh, be, be not conformed to this world. Yeah, but wait a minute, preacher. You, you don't understand. I mean, uh, people look at, at Christians as if they're, they're kind of strange, but Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 2. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And you are peculiar. There's no doubt about that. We are that. And so the world looks at us, and, the, and we look at the world, and the world's out here, and the, the world's on its way to to hell, 
And so we want to emulate the world. I, I, that's what I don't get. You'll pardon me for interjecting this. That's what I don't get about my family. I don't get that. They want to emulate. And I, and I, Carol and I have talked about this before. We, we talk about Pete all the time. I don't know if his ears are burning or not, but we talk about him. Talk about my dad. Talk about old Oakley O'Brien. Town drunk of Bel Air. Dad, dad used to drink. I can remember what he drank. I, I mean, I, I, I can still see. I don't. I can still see it. Uh, and Pete says this. And my dad was saved out of that. Oak was saved out of that. Pete was saved out of that. Why my family wants to go back into that? I, I don't. I really don't quite get that. We are peculiar. But people have the idea, well, I don't want to seem like I'm an oddball. And so the devil throws a dart over there at you and says, no, you don't want to be an oddball. You don't want people to think you're weird. You don't want people to think you're odd. So just conform. And you have an addiction of some kind. And, and John said cigarette smoke or, or uh, 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 for the taste of alcohol. You know, the Bible says to abstain. Right? But the devil says, no, you don't want to do that. Because then people will think you are peculiar. And so if we're going to be successful, then we must have that shield of faith and simply say, okay, devil, I, I really don't care. I'm just going to live by faith and trust God. I'm just going to live. Arnold? What about all the people that always used to say to me, you call yourself a Christian and you uh, do this or this or that. I never had anybody the other way. They were always after me to be better. Absolutely. And you know what? The world expects more of us. Yeah, absolutely. I've never said to a drunk, hey, what are you doing drinking? That's just what drunks do. And so then the drunk looks at us and says to a Christian, what are you doing drinking? And so the world looks at us and, and so we don't want to, we don't want to seem to be odd and we don't want to be left out. And we don't want people to uh, speak badly of us. And so he said, well, you know, uh, boy, I, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. Look. Oh, God, and so we need to be aware of the fact that Satan is continually and constantly, if he's not, then one of his little imps are shooting those arrows at us, those flaming arrows, those darts at us, and, and trying to get us to move off of the rock of faith. What else? What else, Satan? Uh, okay, addictions, conformity, doubt. What else does Satan shoot at us? Physical affliction. Physical affliction. I thought about that today, Dave. Physical affliction. I'll... I'll have you ever been so sick you couldn't pray? Have you ever been there you were so sick you just, I mean, you just couldn't. I, I'm not talking about throwing up, pardon me, you know, puking. Uh, you know, I'm not ta but I'm talking about being so sick you, 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 you couldn't even lift your head off your pillow. And you were really depending on somebody else to pray for you. But God... But sometimes in our lives we have physical afflictions. And we, we ache and, and, and then Satan throws a dart at us. We, we really don't know how Job actually thought. We can read Job and see some of the things he said, but Job's wife said, why don't you curse God and die? All the problems that had happened to Job, his children dying, lost his wealth, lost everything, lost his health, lost just everything. I wonder if he ever thought the privacy of his own thoughts. What does God really love me? Does God? I, I think of uh, Brother Welling with stage four cancer. He's had it for a while, been fighting it. You know, some days are good days, some days are not. You think the devil ever comes around to him? I, I remember hearing Brother Curtis say this. He was almost dead. He's on a tape. He's almost dead. 
And he said this. He said, Lord, he said, Lord, as long as I have breath, I'll praise your name. See, the Satan will come around to us. And he's throwing those darts at us. And he's trying to get us, get us to move off of that rock of faith. See, if we're going to be successful in really Ephesians chapter 6, what it's speaking about in the Christian life, then, then we've got to have that shield of faith. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I, I really don't care what anybody else thinks. They can think that we are nuts, and we are nuts. But everybody is a nut for somebody, amen? And, and you're either going to be a nut for the devil, or you're going to be a nut for God. I always remember Carp always used to say that, you know, no man can serve two masters. He said, you can't straddle the fence. You're either going to serve one or the other. There's no, no neutral ground on that thing. And so Satan will throw these, these darts of, of doubt. Sometimes he'll throw the dart of physical affliction at us. Sometimes God allows things into our lives. But, you know, the great thing is we remember this is, that is, that we are in the hand of God and nothing can get to us that God does not allow. Sometimes we may not understand why, why God allowed it, but I'm thankful that someday we will know. We will understand. Someday we'll know even as he knows. We may not know it now, but someday we will. All right, so Satan sometimes throws the dart of physical affliction at us. Envy. Envy. Who are you envious of? Why did you bring that up? I mean, where would that come from? Envy. You know, those girls sing pretty good. No, I'm sorry. They sing pretty well. They're show-offs. They are show-offs. They're show-offs. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. I see Satan throws a dart at us. You know, I, 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 love, I love to go to church, our church, any church. Singing music does something, either positive or negative, for, for the service. And that's why, I, you know, I, 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 and it, it, nothing against Alex, nothing against Mrs. Ward. I'm constantly telling them, sing loud, play loud. Now, we're not playing rock and roll, but... I mean, we, it, it, you come to church, you had a hard week, and we're singing, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. You know, man, we come to church, and, and uh, 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 I don't know how we got on that, but we're, we're envious. I mean, oh, I know, we come to church, and, we, and I love coming into church where there's good singing, good gospel singing. I love coming, I love coming into church. And somebody says, well, they're just showing off. That's all, they're just showing off. You know what? That kills the service. Man, we come to church and somebody's singing, and, and, you know, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all to the what? Anybody know? Glory, Glory of God. I know I fumble around on the piano, but I told God one day, I said, God, if you'll help me, he said, well, I didn't help you very much. Well, it helped me some. I, I said, God, if you'll help me, I'll sing for you. I, I'll do that. He said, well, you're just showing off. No, I'm not. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love... He's not, oh. You know, I don't know whether it's a, a cultural thing or not. But if you go down south... They're saying, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. I mean, they're just ripping through it up here. It's, oh, how I, you know, good song service. Oh, they're, they're just, people are just showing off. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're doing it. I, I, I believe I can say they're doing it for the God's honor and glory. And, I, and I've said this before, and, and I know that every church is different. I know that. I, I, I don't, uh, you don't need to clap for me. 
You don't need to boo for me either, but you know, you don't, you don't need to clap for me. Let's give God the glory. Amen. Amen. You know, it's just God the glory. All right, what else? We, we got our, anybody, anybody else? What else, is God, or what else is Satan throwing at us? What else is he throwing at us? Doubt. He's throwing physical affliction at us. What else does Satan throw at us? Anybody else got an idea? What? Discouragement. Wow. Anybody ever been discouraged? Yeah? Uh-huh. If you want to know what discouragement is, you ought to be the preacher once in a while. Brother Curtis said every Monday he quit. Every Tuesday he re-enlisted. If we understand John chapter 21 correctly, when Peter said, I go fishing, what he was saying was he's making a declaration that I'm going back into the fishing business. Six discouraged, or seven discouraged preachers right there. Seven discouraged preachers. Peter and the other six guys that were with him. Must have been a Monday. <laughs> discouragement. If we're going to overcome discouragement, we, got to have, we need to believe God. That all things do work together to them that what? Love God. Love him. Love God. Lord, I love you. Don't understand everything. I, and we don't understand everything. But boy, we get discouraged sometimes just by the process of life. We get discouraged. And Satan wants us to be discouraged. When we come to church, he wants us to have our heads hanging down. He wants us to sing slowly. He wants us to be thinking about all of our problems. And, and everybody's got problems, amen? Everybody's got problems. I got problems, you got problems. You ought to drive a school bus if you want to have problems, amen? And, and you know, or, or, or and, and I know this, working on a farm. Boy, if you don't have problems working on a farm, if you say, I don't have problems in my life, go work on a farm for a little while. You're nothing. What's Satan want to do? He wants to discourage us. I, I, I wouldn't bet on it, but I, I'll bet that, that there were probably some people who thought, well, you know, maybe I ought to go to prayer meeting tonight. Uh, I'm pretty tired. I got to get up and go to work tomorrow. I, I'm, just, I'm not going. I bet that's true about Sunday. I bet Satan discourages people to keep them from coming. Maybe the, maybe the car won't start. Maybe you got a flat tire. Did you ever have a flat tire when you're trying to get somewhere? The devil trying to discourage you. Or maybe you know somebody says, "Well, not always." And it's true. God may be trying to protect you from something down the road. So instead of being discouraged about it, saying, "Well, Lord, I don't understand it all, but by faith I believe that." You know, you're, you're trying to do something for me. Living by faith. So he throws the, the dart of discouragement at us, and, and he wants us to be down, and he wants us to be discouraged about life. Boy, of all people in the world, we're the ones that ought to have something to be excited about. You know, I, I heard Adrian Rogers say this the other day, and I was going to jump out of the truck. He said this. He said something about having problems. And he said this. He said, Don't be discouraged because the king is on his way. Amen. I thought, Boy, man, isn't that a statement? The king is on his way. Pete, being the great Bible prophet that he is, said, Boy, preacher, as bad as things are, he said, Jesus ought to be coming pretty soon. Well, we don't know that, but we do know this, the king is coming. I'm not, I'm not a, a big the king is coming fan, songs guy, but I'm a real big fan about the king is on his way. The king's on his way. He may not be here today, he may not be here next week, but brother, we don't need to be discouraged. By faith, somebody says, well... Where is the promise of his coming? For all things continue as they were since the father slept. If he's coming, where is he? Was well, that seated at the right hand of God the Father? He's probably getting up just about now to grab the doorknob. 
The king's on his way. Okay, so things get bleak. So we, we have physical problems, or, or we have, and, and sin is, and John says something about addiction problems, but sin is an addiction. I mean, we are addicted to it. That's the way it is. I realize some people have addiction problems. They're addicted to drugs or to alcohol or to, to nicotine or uh, uh, any number of things. But the king is on his way. The king's on his way. Cheer up. Yeah, but I'm pretty discouraged tonight, preacher. Cheer up. The king's on his way. Yeah, but uh, you've said that now for 30 years. So he's one day closer than he was yesterday. The king's on his way. Real quick, real quickly, quickly. One more. Anybody else got one? And I say, preacher? Yes, ma'am. God doesn't love me. You're right there in Ephesians. And verse chapter 3. Look at that. Verse 18. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 18, that we may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Now, now listen. Do you realize that many Christians do not realize that God loves them? Now, I'll put it like this. They do not feel like. They know God loves them because the Bible says he does. But when you get discouraged and things happen, you, uh, uh, unexpected problems, it doesn't matter what it may be. Well, I don't know if God really loves me or not. Well, now, that's not what the Bible says. And so I said, well, I know he loves me because he says he does. The Bible says he does. John chapter 17 makes it very clear that God loves us as he loves the Son. Wow, what kind of, well, as it says in 1 John, what manner of love is this that the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? Uh, I'll tell you, preacher, I just had it pretty rough. I'm not sure. I don't feel like God loves me. I know the Bible says he does, but preacher, I just don't feel he like he loves me. I just don't feel that way. Paul's prayer is that we may know, not only know it up here, not, not talking about being saved, not only do we know it up here, I know the Bible says he loves me, I know that, but down here, in the heart, it's on the left side, I know in my heart, I feel in my heart, I feel, I feel like, I not only know it, but I feel like bad things happen. It is obvious that bad things happen to good people. It just does. That's the way it is. That's what life is. Nobody ever said that it would always be rose petals. Sometimes there's some thorns in there along the way. I found out a long time ago. Sometimes we don't remember, but I found out a long time ago. Not only do I know that God loves me, but I know he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Many people, that's as far as they get with it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's as far as they get. That's it. They never get to the point where Paul prays here in verse 19 that to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. People say, well, how can you go over, how do you go to church all the time? Because I know that there's a God who loves me and who gave his son to die for me so that I can live eternal. How, how, what, what's that verse? No greater love hath a man this than a man lay down his life for his friends. I have called you friends. Where's friend? Jesus. What is that song? What a friend we have in Jesus. Thereby taking 
the shield of faith, whereby we may be able to quench all, not some, that faith, taking God at his word, we may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Now, Lord, for another evening. Thank you for your word, Lord. Jesus, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to live by faith. I, I, I know that's not always easy. Lord, I know that. But Lord, help us just to live by faith. Simply trust you. Lord, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. God, I pray that it be true about this place. That when the Son of Man cometh, he'll find us to be faithful. I think of Antipas, my faithful martyr, faithful unto death. Lord, help us to be faithful, to live by faith, thereby we may be able to defeat the wicked one. We can't do it in our own power. It's impossible. Think of Michael. The Lord rebuke thee. Lord, help us to live and have that strong faith Simply trust and believe you. Our Lord, bless our prayer time and answer our prayers tonight, we ask. We surely need. I stand in need of prayer. Lord, I ask tonight in Jesus' name, amen and amen.